Hi, this is Denise Fleck, the Pet Safety Crusader, here to teach you canine cardiopulmonary cerebral resuscitation. Doggy, doggy, are you awake? Feel for the rise and fall of the chest. No breathing. Pull back on the chin to open the airway. Still no breath. Extend the tongue to take a look inside and see if you can do a sweep and remove any obstruction. But if that is not the cause, seal off the mouth and give two slow, full breaths directly into the nostrils. When you're down here out of the corner of your eye, you should be able to see the lung inflate. But if you can actually close the mouth with one hand, you can keep a hand here on the side of the chest to actually feel for that rise and fall. Once you've given the two slow, full breaths, you're going to come over here to the femoral artery to feel for a pulse. If there is one, just concentrate on your breathing and every 10 breaths or 30 seconds, come back and check for a pulse. At any point there is no pulse, begin compressions. Since Jerry here from Rescue Critters is kind of keel chested, long and narrow in the chest, what we're going to do is we're going to take the upper front leg and bend it back ever so slightly at the joint till the elbow touches the chest. That's where we landmark, that's where we place our hands. Place the heel of your hand there, dominant hand on top with fingers locked. Also lock your elbows and begin to rock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Repeat the breaths one, two, and the compressions. Every four rounds, you recheck for a pulse, and if there isn't one, you just start right over. Do this for three minutes. Get your doggy in the car, continuing on the way if you have somebody else that can drive, and get to emergency veterinary care. If you have a hard surface on which the dog is riding in the car, you can certainly continue the compressions. But if you're placing him on a back seat, you want to grab something quickly, a cutting board, a cookie sheet, something firm to place underneath him, or at the very least, your opposite hand to compress against. If you don't do this, you might just be pushing the dog down into the cushion rather than squeezing the blood out of the heart. Again, with keel-chested dogs or even small dogs, we're going to landmark by pulling that elbow back to find the location. If, however, you have a square-chested dog or a chubby little dog, what you're going to look for is the dome, the highest, widest part of the chest in which to place your hand for compressions. It just allows us to get through that chest wall a little better to do a good compression. And should you have a barrel chested dog, what you're going to do is place him on the back and do it more like you would a human. Obviously having a second person to steady his backside is great or push him against the wall or put cushions on either side to stabilize him. Then place the heel of your hand right on the sternum here between the legs and do your compressions. 30 compressions, 2 breaths, 30 compressions, 2 breaths, and every 4 rounds, recheck for a pulse. If it's a smaller doggy, we can do compressions with just 2 fingers at the location designated, or wrap our hand around this way. Pause cross, you never have to do CPCR on an animal in your life, but if you do, you're doing a wonderful thing and can potentially save their lives. This is Denise Fleck, the Pet Safety Crusader. Thanks for listening.